Uh, good morning, everybody. This is Bhurne Shoza. Uh, we would want to talk about the introduction to electrical power generation today. <coughs> so next slide, please. Uh, just for your information, uh, this is my uh, cell numbers and my email ID. Next slide. Yes, friends. Uh, just to give you an idea, these are the figures uh, of power generation. In Gujarat state, uh, about 25,000 megawatt of power is produced. And the figure in India is some 371,000 megawatt. If we just see the uh, sources of different electricity, the coal-based thermal power plant is 59%. Hydro power plant takes 17% of the share all throughout India. Renewables are 12%. Gas-based power plants are 9% and oil-based power plants are uh, 1%. Nuclear power right now takes share of about 2%. So we will be concentrating more on coal-based power plant because its share is also more. <coughs> Next slide. Uh, the thermal power plant, uh, if you see what are the sub plants in thermal power plants. So thermal power plant contains coal handling plant, PFN, ID fan and FD fan, boiler, feed water treatment that is demineralizing of uh, water, handling and feeding of feed water, ash handling plant, a, a big problem, ash handling plant, because ash is not allowed to be disposed anywhere, and quite a lot, much amount of ash is there. Steam turbines, generator, generator transformer, that is a power transformer attached to generator, uh, switch yard, steam cooling system, that is, uh, circulating water system, cooling water system, and instrumentation and control. So these are the major plants. We will not be able to go into the details of everything because we are just trying to introduce the how the power is generated. Therefore, details are, are not possible right now. Uh, but just to give you an idea, so many uh, sub-plants are there. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so, we will start with the flow diagram of thermal power plant. <coughs> that is, uh, in flow diagram, we will see fuel cycle. That is how the fuel is fed to the boiler. Flue gas cycle, that means the flue gases which are heating water. How do they pass in boiler? Water steam cycle, circulating water cycle. Uh, and electrical cycle. So we will be seeing these cycles in the uh, next slide. So in the next slide, the complete flow diagram is given. This slide is not fully seen. So let us see. Hmm. Yes, please. So now I think you can see the full slide. Now you can see the full slide. Uh, we start with the 
fuel cycle first. So you can see on the left hand corner, right, the wagon is coming. Number one is the rail wagon. So there will be a train and one of the wagons is disconnected from the other wagons. Right? And that wagon is brought to the platform of wagon tippler. So there will be complete wagon will be toppled upside down. So number two is the wagon tippler mechanism. And number three is coal hopper. The coal is unloaded by just toppling the whole wagon upside down because see there is quite a lot much of coal is required. When in Vanakpuri thermal power plant there were seven plants of 210 megawatt, it's some 1470 megawatt at Vanakpuri. Now the eighth plant has come up. Uh, but before that, I know the figures that around uh, uh, 17, 18,000 tons of coal was required daily. That means about five train full of coals uh, is required daily. So that much of coal is to be unloaded and is to be handled. So the coal comes to coal hopper. From coal hopper, it goes to primary crusher number five right, via conveyor belt. So these conveyor belts are run by 6.6 kV motors, large motors, uh, voltage I think 6.6 .6 kV and uh, these conveyor belts are run continuously, they are endless belts. So they will be running and coal will be conveyed to primary crusher house number 5. So it crushes the coal to small dimensions and that means the coal received is, is of uh, variable dimensions and coal, coal is being, coal is coming to this uh, number five primary crusher house where it is reduced to a smaller size and it will go to secondary crusher house number six. So from 6, there are two paths you can see. One path is going via the uh, transfer tower. That means when you want to change the angle, you will need a junction tower. So it goes through junction tower and it goes to number 10. Number 10 is a uh, boiler house bunker. Right? So from 6, that is secondary crusher house, the coal goes to this. But if the coal received is more, then it goes to storage area via staker reclaimer. There is a staker reclaimer number seven. So coal is taken to bunker. In secondary crusher, the coal is uh, crushed to a size of around 18 mm size, three fourth of an inch roughly. Right? So it is crushed to a very small size, which can be handled by coal mill. So from coal, the boiler house bunker, the coal goes to coal mill, that is number 11. From 11, I mean, the coal is completely milled. Milled means it is pulverized. Pulverizing is 200 BS mesh, very small. It is in the powder form. So in the powder form, it cannot be conveyed via conveyor belt. Therefore, it is conveyed to the boiler via this pipeline. It is conveyed to the boiler via pipeline, right? And the conveying is done by coal mill. But coal mills will convey coal to six different elevations in the boiler. It is not shown here, but it is conveying coal to six different elevations in the boiler. For coal mill so that the milled coal does not enter the because coal mill is a vertical shaft motor so the coal powder should not enter the bearing so bearing area is protected by sealing and for that there is a seal air fan number 23 is a seal air fan and seal air fan receives air from uh, this uh, primary air fan so 
that is primary air fan and uh, the force draft fan two fans are there 20 is the primary air fan so primary air which is sucked from the atmosphere and taken to the coal mill right so pressurized air is taken to coal mill so this is cool air but some part of the air will pass through air preheater and from air preheater it will be heated here it will be mixed so that is going to be cold hot air uh, uh, mixture here that mixture and there is a damper right so that there is a door kind of thing and that door will be opened or closed partially in such a way that uh, how much amount of cold and hot air do you want to convey to uh, uh, convey to the coal mill that you have to decide depending upon uh, the load on the boiler the load on the power plant right so cold, cold, cold and hot air mixture is going to coal mill the coal is being milled by coal mill and that coal plus air because air is required for combustion so coal plus air is taken to the boiler via pipeline right so that is a coal will reach here when coal reaches here it is it is uh, rather thrown into the boiler by burners coal burners these coal burners are tangential burners they are tangential in the in the boiler there are four burners set four corners and they will throw the coal tangentially that air which is fed by primary air is not enough for combustion i mean that that will not be enough therefore we will need some more air some extra air is required that much air is not sufficient so 21 is the fd fan force draft fan pa fan t is run by 1250 kw induction motor i am talking about 210 megawatt power plant for a higher power plant the megawatt rating of pa uh, fan motor would be different but they are large motors that's what i mean and 21 is the force draft fan it uh, sucks air from atmosphere pressurizes it and made hot in the air plater so that efficiency is more you have not to give more temperature in the boiler right because air preheater and air preheater heats by heats the air by the temperature of the flue gases itself because flue gases are coming out and they are passing through air preheater so that air is given to the boiler and now two air fd air and primary air are mixed now the air is sufficient to sufficient for combustion so c plus o2 is equal to co2 plus heat so enough amount of heat is produced and that uh, uh, rather the tangential burners will be creating a fireball inside the boiler and that fireball will travel helically upwards and while traveling upwards it will hit up the uh, hit up the uh, water that is there in the water tube walls so i mean coal is fed from wagons to boiler in this particular way no doubt when you are starting a boiler starting is not possible by coal so one has to use the uh, light oil that is a diesel kind of oil and first the light oil is fed right and it is ignited by something like spark plug which we are using in our scooters or autos right so by spark plug the uh, diesel is ignited and therefore the fire starts now in that fire once again we send the fuel oil fo that is heavy oil because its calorific value is more so once the temperature is enough then you can start feeding coal because then coal will start burning the final temperature in boiler <coughs> in the boiler furnace area 
34 is boiler furnace area. So in this area, the temperature is around 1050 to 1100 degrees centigrade. Very large temperature is there, right? And temperature will go on reducing as it goes up, the flue gas is up. So the second cycle is flue gas cycle, which starts from boiler furnace area. So flue gases while traveling up will first heat up the water in water tube walls. Water tube walls are just tubes in the periphery of the boiler. Boiler is a square boiler construction, right? And it is around 55 meter high. I am giving the figures for 210 megawatt plant. It is around 55 meter high, right? So in, in that, the uh, this uh, water tubes are there. One tube, then another tube, third tube. So it forms the wall. And in that wall, uh, this is uh, getting heated. I mean, the water which is there inside the tubes will be heated because of the temperature of the flue gases. So by the time the water reaches the top of the tubes, it is wet steam. It is not now no more water. It will be wet steam. From here, the wet steam will go to primary superheater, number 29 or superheater stage 1, right? So there, wet steam will be converted to practically dry steam. There will be no water content practically. And that comes to boiler drum. Boiler drum is, is very important. But uh, let us forget about that. First, let us see the flue gas path. So flue gases are traveling upwards and it will hit up water in water tubes. Then it will hit up uh, steam to superheat in superheater stage 2, number 31. Then it will hit up uh, steam in reheater, that is 32. Then 30 is a D superheater. Then 29 is superheater stage 1. Then 28 is economizer. And air preheater is also a part of boiler. However, here it is shown away, but it is part of the boiler. So it will come to uh, the air preheater. Then it will go to 24, that is electrostatic precipitator. Then the ID fan, induced draft fan, which sucks. So the function of FDID combination is to create a draft, is to create a draft, FDID. The proper draft is created. The pressure inside the boiler should be little less than atmosphere so that the heat does not go away by radiation. That is that is required. So proper draft should be there. So friends, if uh, we go into the details, then there are very many things. That is, what are the permissives for P PFN and what are the interlocks for PFN? When you are starting the boiler, what is the starting sequence for starting PFN? What are the conditions those are required to be fulfilled? Now, what can be the difficulties, problems occur in boiler? What are the emergencies that can occur? And what steps you have to take under these emergencies? That is all detailing. And right now, we cannot do those, those detailing. We cannot do the detailing work of the... Uh, we are just trying to introduce right now. So, FDID combination will create proper draft because... The natural draft because of height is not enough. Therefore, the forced draft is created by FD ID combination. Number 25 is the ID fan, and then it goes to the chimney. Chimney is around 325 meter high structure, and that is used for natural draft. Right? So the flue gases are finally let out at the top. Flue gases are finally let out at the top. So flue gases have started from furnace and they have gone out of uh, the chimney at the end. So that is the flue gas cycle. Now we see the water steam cycle. Water steam cycle starts from number 33, boiler drum. Boiler drum is very important. Uh, it is around uh, constructed out of a steel cylinder 
about one inch thick, some 25 millimeter thick, right? It is a cylinder and half of the drum is filled with water, lower half, the upper half is steam. Right? And level of this drum is very important. If this level reduces, then water tube walls will starve and they will not get enough water. It is quite possible that they, if they do not get water, then the heat will not be transferred to water because water is not available. So it will be transferred to tube material and it can erode the tubes. In the worst case, it can puncture the tubes also. So boiler drum levels should not go low. Uh, that is the very purpose why I am talking about this uh, thermal power plant. Because if drum level reduces too low, then it will initiate class B protection of generator in power plant. So many of the class B protections are not electrical. They are based on certain mechanical considerations in boiler and in turbine. Right? So that is why this boiler drum is very drum level is very important. If drum level goes high, then the steam will become wet and that wet steam will enter the turbine. If not in HP turbine or IP turbine, in LP turbine, uh, last two, three stages, it may be wet and then turbine blades will be damaged because of corrosion. The steam should not be wet in turbine blades when it comes out. So that way the drum level is very important. So I start with drum. I, I take it for granted because water steam cycle is a closed loop cycle. Therefore, we have to start from somewhere. Huh? We have to in a circle. We have to start from somewhere and we have to come back to that point. So we start with drum and we land with drum. So in drum, the water is there. That water comes down by what is known as down comer number 35. And from down comer, it enters into ring at 36. And then it travels upward in water tube walls, 37. By the time it goes up, it becomes wet steam. Then that wet steam is superheated in superheater stage 1, 29 or primary superheater. That dry steam comes to drum. There, you see, if at all some water content is there by cyclone separators, the water content is separated. So purely dry steam will remain on the top and water will go downwards right from there the steam will come to secondary superheater that is it is superheated further superheated the final uh, temperature and pressure is 540 degrees centigrade this is one parameter which i am talking from one power plant 540 degrees centigrade and some 140 kg per centimeter square pressure so very high pressure, uh, very high temperature steam, which is known as main steam, is coming out from main steam pipe 40. So that main steam pipe is feeding steam to number 41, that is the HP turbine, high pressure turbine. From high pressure turbine, the steam comes out. It is doing work and that work is used the mechanical work that is available is fed to generator 56, 55, generator 55. It is fed to uh, our generator, two pole machine. Our generator steam turbo alternators are two pole machines. They are running at 3000 RPM. So that work is supplied by this HP turbine. From HP turbine, before feeding to IP, we are taking this steam back to the boiler via cold reheat and the temperature is increased so that the steam do not condense in the LP turbine. This steam is fed to IP turbine and from IP turbine after doing work it goes to LP turbine. LP turbine is a two pass turbine, double pass turbine and on both sides it will expand and it will do the work. So HP, IP, LP total work is given to generator. The steam then will come out and it will go to condenser. In condenser, we are circulating the water in thin tubes. The circulating water is passing. 
so because of this uh, circulating water will take the heat of steam and water will be converted to steam because we cannot use uh, different i mean what fresh water every time large water requirement is there right that much water would not be available so same steam is converted to water right and that water or what we call it condensate is extracted by condensate extraction pump number 46 this condensate extraction pump is also a 6.6 .6 kv motor and then that water will go to lp heaters low pressure feed water heaters so water is heated there this is to improve the cycle efficiency time will not permit me to talk about all this what is cycle efficiency it is all mechanical more many things are mechanical it is about thermodynamic efficiency and it is a Rankin cycle efficiency that means converting Rankin cycle to nearly Carnot cycle because Carnot is the best most efficient cycle but uh, time would not permit me to go to all these things so this water that is heated will be going to the uh, the air at 48 there air if at all air content has come up it will be removed and the air at is more or less at the height of 30 meter right and to to take it to 30 meter height condensate extraction pump will work then 49 is the feed water storage tank from feed water storage tank the water is taken to 50 boiler feed pump boiler feed pump is a mini power plant in 210 megawatt power plant we are using three bfp two normal and one uh, one is standby so two normal feed water pumps bfps four megawatt each eight megawatt is consumed by boiler feed pump alone water is pumped at a pressure of 165 to 170 kg per centimeter square to boiler drum right so the boiler feed pump suction should not be starving of pressure or starving of water that is the reason why the deaerator is at 30 meter high potential height and if that height is not enough uh, so in, in many power plants 500 megawatt power plants they use between uh, deaerator and boiler feed pump they use booster pumps so water after boiler feed pump goes to uh, hp heaters after being heated in hp heaters high pressure heaters once again feed water is heated further and taken to economizer it's taken to economizer in economizer it is once again further heated by the time it reaches back to drum, its temperature is of the order of some 300 or 350 degrees centigrade, quite large temperature. At 300, it is yet water because it is very high, high pressure. In economizer, the water is heated by taking the heat from flue gases because flue gases are passing like this. Flue gases are passing in two passes, upside and then downwards. In, in double pass boiler, they will they will pass like this. So uh, water is heated in economizer and then it is fed to drum boiler drum we started from drum and we ended with drum so that is a water steam cycle so fuel cycle uh, flue gas cycle water steam cycle right and uh, the ash that is collected is uh, rather for i mean the uh, ash should not be uh, ash has to be removed from the flue gases so electrostatic precipitator removes the ash from the flue gases electrostatic precipitator is a device it's an electric device high voltage of the order of 50 kv dc is used and by the by the uh, rather principle of corona discharge the uh, ash is collected on collecting electrodes and ash free flue gases practically ash free flue gases i should say because the efficiency of modern electrostatic precipitator is of the order of 95 percent right so the 
percent efficiency is there. So one percent ash will yet go. So if I take figure of twenty thousand tons per day, then Indian ash, Indian coal contains 33% ash. So some 7,000 tons of ash will come out. And if I consider 99%, then yet 70 tons of uh, coal uh, ash will go out of chimney. But that ash will be going 325 meter high. And it will settle down in a big, large area. So the pollution control board people are uh, checking up the uh, P PPM value that is parts per million if it exceeds beyond certain thing they have got powers to close the power plant so that is ash handling and ash content pollution is a big problem of thermal power plant yes so that is the uh, water steam cycle the cooling water cycle cooling water cycle is short cooling water is fed to condenser cool water it takes heat of the steam and hot water, hot water is coming from uh, the condenser and it goes to cooling tower. Cooling tower is a very high structure, some 125 meter high. And the base diameter is of the order of 100, 125 meter. Very large tower is there, right? And it is having convergent, divergent shape and convergent, divergent shape to increase the velocity of air inside. So air enters from downwards and it goes upwards so while doing so it will cool the water that is coming so this hot water is naturally cooled by cooling towers in the cooling towers the water is thrown from around 15 meter high height and in in small droplets it is coming out it is going down and while going down it becomes cool and that cool water by cooling water pumps it is fed to condenser again. So that circulation goes on. That means a closed cycle will go on. This circulating water is not demineralized. It is not necessary to demineralize because it is not going in the boiler. It's not going to high temperature area. Electrical cycle, the last cycle means in power plant, electrical part is very small. The power is generated by generator that is stepped up by generator transformer and fed to people but before feeding to people uh, you you will be before you feed power to people 10 percent of the power is required by all the auxiliaries that we talked about so friends this is the flow diagram of power plant so we go to the next side of key one line diagram after completing i mean how this this way you can understand uh, this is how the power is produced. So please take me to key one line diagram. That is the next slide. Uh, figure 2.2, .2, that is the key one line diagram. Given lender. So, friends, we will we will we'll go to Kevin Land diagram of the power plant, and uh, we will see as to how the electrical part of the cycle works. In electrical part we will come to know as to how the power uh, so yes uh, I think you can see the K1 line diagram Yes, it's visible. It's visible. Good. 
so event line diagram is the generator say 210 megawatt generator power is taken to generator transformer right generator transformer will step up the power to feed in five to infinite bus from generator to generator transformer there is no breaker the power is taken by a bus duct number 12 is a bus duct from and bus duct is also feeding the unit auxiliary transformers number two 15.75 kV to 6.6 kV, some 15 MVA rating because 10% of power is required to feed the auxiliaries. It comes to 6.6 kV, uh, 6.6 kV. Uh, 6.6 kV. Can you see the figure 2.1? Is that uh, you are not printing? 2.2. 2.2, yes. So, uh, on the screen, 2.1 is visible. 2.1 is visible. Flow diagram cover graph. 2.2 is not visible to you? No, uh, only 2.1 is visible on the screen. 2.2 should come to you. 2.2 should come to you. Uh, no, right now uh, the screen shows figure 2.1. Yes. Yes. I now hope. it's uh, visible. Yes. Right. So yes. the generator will generate power, and the power is fed to generator transformer. That is uh, number three. It will step up power, and it will feed to two twenty kV bus. Some of the power, some ten percent, say out of two hundred ten megawatt, roughly twenty one megawatt is required by the auxiliaries, and that is fed by unit auxiliary transformer number two so it is stepping down from 15.75 kv to 6.6 kv that is generator voltage to the auxiliary voltage auxiliary requirement it comes to 6.6 kv unit bus one and two two buses just for flexibility that means if there is some failure half the power will be available to us right there there is number five only one induction motor is shown but it is not one there are many there are two pf fans two id fans two fd fans six coal mills two boiler feed pumps two uh, condensate extraction pumps and many things so all these motors are connected on both these buses and power is stepped down to 415 volt also by what is known as ust unit service transformer number eight so power is stepped down by this unit service transformer number eight and then it is taken to 415 volt unit bus where many induction motors and many other auxiliaries are running at 415 volt to run the power plant so all these uh, auxiliaries are coming to this uh, for i mean they are fed by 415 volt bus but there are many station auxiliaries also like coal and link plant is a station auxiliary CW system, circulating water system is a stationer. Station auxiliary means the auxiliaries which are common to all the units in a plant. Say in Vanakpuri, there are seven or eight plants. There are certain auxiliaries which are common to all units and certain auxiliaries which are specific to a unit. They are known as unit auxiliaries. PFN, ID fan, FD fan, BFP are unit auxiliaries. CW system, coal and link system, they are uh, station auxiliaries. These station auxiliaries are fed by station bus. Station bus power is coming from infinite bus. From 220 to 6, 220 kV to 6.6 .6 kV, the power will come to number 7. And that many motors will run on that. Also, it will be stepped down to 415 volt to feed power to uh, 415 volt station auxiliaries. And then through the uh, the a tie breaker the power is taken to six through tie breaker number four power is taken to six that means when the unit trips due to fault forced outage or scheduled outage we are tripping to maintain the unit then when you want to restart all these auxiliaries will need power 
So that power is taken from number four. Number four tiebreaker is usually off. It is not on. It is made on only when you want to restart the auxiliaries. Actually, as a part of sequence of class A protection, number four will become on, on automatically as a part of class A protection of generator. So this is how all 415 volt and 6.6 .6 kV auxiliaries are fed in the K1 line diagram, right? So let us let us go to the next slide just to list out the auxiliaries. Uh, so earlier slide, let us let us see what are the auxiliaries. The earlier slides, let us see first. Yes, uh, yet earlier slide, one more. Yes, uh, just to give you an idea as to what are the 6.6 .6 kV auxiliaries, main 6.6 .6 kV auxiliaries. This list is not exhaustive. This is just to give you an idea. Induced draft fans, that is ID fan motor, FD fan motors, PA fan motors, circulating water pumps, BFPs, hole mills, hole crushers, conveyor belt motors, condensate extraction pump, and lubricating oil. Because all these motor uh, and pump uh, the bearings are to be lubricated. They are running at high speed. So that for that lubricating oil is continuously being uh, circulated. Lubricating oil that enters the bearing will become hot and it has to be cooled and by oil coolers. So it will cool and once again enter. So it will be circulated and that circulation is done by what is known as lube oil pump in short. So yes, this is 6.6 kV. Next slide is 415 volt. Uh, next slide is, uh, if you see the next slide, there are 415 volt auxiliaries. There is light oil pumps, heavy oil pumps, lube oil transfer pump, wagon tiplers, right? The complete wagon is toppled upside down, canal water pumps, seal air fan, stacker reclaimer, coal feeders, coal mill lube oil pump, PFN lube oil pump, rack and pinion gear motor in coal handling system, vibro feeder motor in coal handling system, belt fit drive, air preheater motor because air, air preheater is a continuously rotating item. So it is rotating at a very small speed, 2 to 3 RPM, but it is rotated. So it has to be rotated and rotation is very important. Air preheater rotation is very important. It is rotated by 415 volt motors. If 415 volt AC motor fail, then DC motors will take up. And if DC motor also fail, then somebody is made to sit and manually he will rotate the handle from outside. Air preheater cannot stop, should not stop. Even when the unit trips, air preheater should keep on rotating. Air preheater is a, an emergency auxiliary. Air preheater, lube oil pump, soot blower motors. I mean, complete uh, water tube walls have to be cleaned periodically. And while the boiler is on, on load, when the unit is on, at that time with, with unit is working, soot blowing is done by dry steam. So for that, there are many soot blowers, some 56 soot blowers throughout the different elevations in the boiler and there are long retractable blowers. So that need the power, gas analyzer motor and turning gear motor. When the unit trips, the turbine has to be run at a so slow speed of about 2 to 3 RPM for which we will need one turning gear motor or what is known as barring gear motor. So this is all the different auxiliaries. I think that that should take us to hydro power plant. Uh, right. So hydro power plant, uh, this water reservoir, M, trash rack, pan stock. For this, uh, we better see the figure. Right. This uh, what what is the function of reservoir, dam, trash, tax, pen stock that is shown here. So we will see the figure of hydro power plant, tail race, draft tube, surge tank, one house. Let me take, uh, let us go to the uh, diagram of hydro power plant. So hydro power plant is like this, reservoir. There will be a reservoir. That means the water that is coming from the uh, river is, is hindered by a dam a masonry construction so the reservoir is filled in 
from reservoir, there will be a trash rack so that the debris do not enter the powerhouse. So it is just filter, right? And then the water will go to wall house. Wall house means there are two walls, steam control wall and steam stop wall. If you want to, I mean, sorry, water control wall and water stop wall. So what? how much water you would want to allow to powerhouse depending upon the load on the uh, turbines, load on the generator. So to control the entry of water, you have a wall house. But when you are stopping water completely to stop the unit, there is possibility of water hammer because water is a very viscous fluid. So to avoid the water hammer and damage to the doors of the wall, the surge tank is used. Surge tank is a shock absorber, is a kind of shock absorber. Then water flows through pan stock from height. Because of potential height, it will be heating the turbine and turbines will rotate. Hydro turbines are low speed machines. 750 RPM or 375 RPM. That is some 8 pole or 16 pole machine because the viscosity of water is quite high. Viscosity is the fluid viscosity of steam is very low. So steam turbines you can rotate at high speed. Yeah, these turbines are rotated at low speed. But yet frequency is the same 120 F by P if you calculate frequency is the same. And then water is let out in the tail rays. This is how the hydro power is produced. That means, and hydro is said to be a renewable kind of power because we are not, I mean, we are not creating any any pollution. And therefore, it's, it, it is told to be a pollution-free power plant. And if the possibility of uh, dam construction is possible, the obviously the... Uh, Initial cost of hydro power plant is quite high, but then uh, running cost comparatively uh, with reference to thermal power plant is very, very low. So, yes, this is about in short about as I told you, hydro power plant percentage is small. We give less percentage time wise also to hydro power plant. Yes, please. Uh, we go to the next plant that is the nuclear power plant. In nuclear power plant, what we do, it is same as the thermal power plant, but heat is not produced by burning coal. Heat is produced by nuclear fission. There are many fissile material, uranium, thorium, zircaloy. Right? So this fissile materials are fission is done. A, a neutron is bombarded on this uh, fissile material and the nuclear fission will generate very large amount of heat. What, whatever is done in the nuclear bomb that is done here in a controlled way so that we, we have to control the fission process. For controlling, uh, we use the moderator and controlled road. That is moderator is reducing the neutron speed to a value uh, which is uh, which can create fission right uh, and which would not allow the fission to go out of our control so <laughs> to, uh, neutron neutron speed is regulated by moderator the materials used as moderator are hydrogen deuterium helium boron nitrogen oxygen water graphite etc if you are using water then same thing can be used as a coolant also control roads are regulating the fission process according to the load on the uh, generator right and if you want to stop uh, the nuclear power plant then also the control rods can be used the uh, cooling is required so for that coolants are also required to be used let us go to the next slide probably the uh, figure right so in this figure if you see uh, actually there is nothing in primary circuit the nuclear fission is going on right so nuclear fission will produce large amount of heat that heat is passed on to coolant so coolant becomes hot and that goes to secondary circuit so secondary circuit is a kind of boiler so it will heat water so normal water will be heated by the coolant which has become hot so that will become cool and it will go back to the nuclear reactor. So primary circuit is a nuclear reactor. Secondary circuit is a boiler. Then 
the steam will come out and it will go to the turbine. I have shown one, but there can be HP, IP, LP, right? Condenser, same as thermal power plant, right? And the turbine runs the generator which feeds the electricity, right? So the upper one is this fossil fuel plant, that is the uh, coal based thermal power plant, lower one, just to compare. How, how does the nuclear power plant work? Nuclear power plant more or less works in the same way. But it is said that for, say, I was telling about uh, the uh, Vanakpuri plant, you need some 17,000 tons or five trains full of coals every day. Probably here, you would require hardly 1 kg of uranium or 1.5 kg of uranium to uh, produce the same electricity. Figures are given somewhere. I have forgotten the figures. But they are uh, very, I mean, they are very, uh, you would be getting exclaimed that such a small amount of uranium is producing the same amount of energy, right? And quite clean. The nuclear power plants are very clean because there is no coal, there is no carbon, there is no ash, huh? uh, there is no uh, nothing. So comparatively very clean. But the problem, very, very big problem that how to, where to leave the fissile products. That is a very big problem. And the accidents that occur in nuclear power plants. Many accidents have occurred in the world. Huh? Chernobyl accident, uh, three island ex accident. Uh, many accidents have occurred in the nuclear power plant. So that itself has to be answered or addressed. People are trying to, uh, so that the safety uh, is at the prime importance that people and all governments, all nations are trying to make the nuclear power plants. But yet, uh, as, as in India, I was, I was telling, the nuclear power uh, percentage is hardly two or three percentage, very small as on date. Yes, let us go to the next. Uh, slide. Uh, combined cycle power plant. Uh, nowadays, actually, I heard that only supercritical boilers and thermal power plants have the highest percentage. But the combined cycle power plant efficiency is much better. The overall efficiency of thermal power plant is maybe as good as 45% or at the most 48%. Whereas Cycle efficiency of the order of 58% is possible in, in combined cycle power plant. Let us see the figure. You can read through this afterwards. So let us see the figure. Uh, very, so to say, comparatively quite simple. In fuel combustion, right? Fuel combustion that is shown. Fuel is sent and that fuel is uh, combusted. That means it is fired, right? So for firing, we are sending the compressed there. And here in the gas turbine, it is fired. So the high uh, fired gases will be running the turbine and it will be running the generator. So by the, the gases, those are fired. Uh, the gas means the uh, type of gas that is in coal, oil and gas combustible gas we are using. So that gas is fired and that gas comes out. That gas which comes out is of the order of 850 to 900 degrees centigrade. So rather than throwing it away that we are sending to HRSC heat recovery steam generator, heat recovery steam generator. So that is sent there. It's a kind of boiler. So there the water is heated and then the gases are exhausted which are now low temperature, right? So the Water is heated by HRSG that is converted into steam that runs steam turbine. So this is our normal thermal cycle. And the uh, below, whatever we are seeing is a gas cycle. So it is a combined cycle power plant. We are using two different cycles. So Rankin cycle, the top one, and Bruton cycle, the lower one. And therefore the name combined cycle power plant. So some power is produced by this method also. So yes, let us go to the next slide uh, because we were we are supposed to end by this time. We have to give some time to question answers. So this rating and specifications. So all those things that I have spoken up till now, uh, uh, in short, I have spoken because of time constraint. 
all these things are available in module 1 of uh, which i have written on power system protection module 1 is containing three chapters the first chapter is about uh, the construction of generator and specifications of generator uh, and transformer etc the second chapter is on power plants which we have discussed thermal power plant uh, nuclear power plant uh, hydro power plant and uh, the combined cycle power plant that has been explained in second chapter and third chapter is about uh, transmission lines transmission of power that is power system in general is covered in module one that module one is available on adapt me that is an app which has been which is already available and you can download the app from play store and from play store if you go to the engineering modules you will find my modules on power system protection there this module number one talks about all this that i have talked and you have to answer certain questions also to to be uh, to be perfect as much perfect as possible in this introductory part of uh, power generation so specifications also i can i mean for apparent power how to uh, calculate or how to consider apparent power what is the meaning of apparent power right uh, usually 210 megawatt means 247 mva is there so all these items when you are purchasing a boiler you have to specify so many items you have to talk about so many items the details of these items are once again given in module one of power system protection by adapt me power factor is very important right you have to design the generator at a particular power factor if i say 0.85 leg then generator will work from 0.85 leg to unity below 0.85 leg generator cannot work and if at all it works it will be working at reduced power so power capability will change continuous maximum power rating megawatt is very important and that megawatt at different power factors will differ voltage rating full load current full load current is very high say for 210 megawatt 15.75 kv generator 9000 ampere 9050 is the full load current to dissipate heat of this current is a big task right therefore the generator stator conductors are hollow and through the hollow the distilled water is continuously run and the flow uh, temperature and pressure at the entry and exit both are required to be measured if something goes off something goes uh, not, not as not as per requirement then the unit there may be an alarm or unit may trip also right so all these things are big business many people are working in power plant to control all these things short circuit ratio synchronous reactants usually quite large because the fault current in steady state is half the rated current synchronous reactance of large generator is to the tune of 200 to 225 percent through fault withstand transient and subtransient direct access reactances negative sequence and zero sequence reactance all these we have to specify ki musko aisa generator chahiye i want such a generator yes please the next specifications uh, the the further specifications uh, are given in the next slide bring me the next slide yes inertia constant uh, negative phase sequence withstand right i2 square t withstand k overload withstand allowable sleep excitation voltage and current and nature of neutral earthing all these things you have to specify the details i do not have time to talk about therefore uh, you can refer to module one of uh, adapt me uh, so i think that should that should end uh, next slide must be question and answers so i hand over the session to the organizers to continue further yes thank you very much uh, for a nice uh, presentation in the webinar there are a few questions due uh, to shortage of time we might not take all of them uh, there's a question uh, from the audience. Could you please explain what is class A, B, and C protection of generator? Uh, right. Good question. Um, 
Yeah, it was not supposed to be covered uh, in in this session, but well, when you asked, class A protection is for very severe faults within the generator. Not only generator, generator transformer in UAT also, because there is no breaker between generator GT and UAT. If at all there is a very severe internal fault within the generator, then the generator would be badly damaged. Very badly damaged. Uh, I I was told recently that two 660 megawatt plants would take uh, some 1800 crores. Generator is very costly. Generator is a very costly device. So in that case, class A protection will trip. When class A protection trips, many events happen. Actually, some 48 events happen. But to just tell hurriedly, generator breaker will trip. UAT breakers will trip. All auxiliaries will trip. Boiler has to be tripped, means boiler flame flame has to be extinguished. Turbine will trip, means turbine stop valve will close. Sim stop valve in the turbine will close. The, uh, the tie breaker will close. So, so many events will occur. Complete unit will come to hold. That is class A protection. But in that case, you see, when you hold everything, then generator is going to speed up because generator loses load. Therefore, generator will speed up, which is already running at 3000 RPM. 3000 RPM itself is a very high speed. And therefore, the rotor parts under are under heavy pressure, under heavy mechanical forces. So, higher speed is may also damage the generator. So, special braking systems are there in the generator. To avoid that class B protection, not very severe faults, usually faults outside the generator. Under frequency is class B, field failure is class B, NPS protection is class B. So there are certain protections for which the reason is not inside. So there, what we'll do, we will not trip generator breaker. We will trip only boiler and turbine. So mechanical power will not be given to generator. Generator will slowly, I mean power will be slowly reducing. When the power is less than... 0.5 to 3 percent of rated power of the generator towards bus that means low forward power relays will operate and class a protection will be initiated little later and in class b protection in this way we are using kinetic energy of the machine that is class b class c is purely external fault fault in transmission lines transmission line breaker should operate if that does not operate uh, generator transformer uh, secondary side breaker will operate and that if generator transformer secondary breaker operates it is class c protection in class c protection only generator breaker is stripped nothing is stripped boiler will continue turbine will continue generator will continue to feed house load that is 10 percent of power therefore uh, you see you may not have to restart the power plant class a tripping and class b tripping to bring back the generator to the system takes a large time. That depends upon to what extent the boiler has become cool. If the boiler is completely cool, room temperature, then it takes minimum seven hours to restart. And people in plants have brought back the generator within one or one and a half hour in case of class A and class B protection. Very efficient engineers are being able to do with within one and one, one or one and a half hour. But class C, only generator breaker has to be made on synchronization hardly five to seven minutes maximum right it can be yet faster also so class c only generator breaker tips these three classes are required in case of generator such tripping is not there in transmission lines or transformers yes friends next question uh, the next question is how to calculate turbine speed Turbine speed is calculated from 120 F by P. You have to decide the number of poles. So generator speed is decided first and you have to run the turbine at that speed. To increase the speed of the turbine, you have to feed more and more steam. Right? By steam control valve, you have to enter more and more steam. So turbine will go on increasing. Turbine speed will go on increasing. That is known as turbine rolling. When you are starting a generator, turbine rolling time is of the order of 20 minutes. It gains speed of 3000 RPM. Once it gains speed of 3000 RPM, then synchronization with the bus is done. 
So speed is 120F by P. Yes. Uh, yes, before we take up uh, next uh, question, I'll, uh, I'd like to display some polls. Uh, I'd like audience to participate. Uh, this will help us uh, in covering more uh, topics. So the question on the display is, uh, which topic would you prefer to be covered in next sessions? Uh, we request audience to uh, please participate on the uh, poll on your screens. Uh, only one uh, I can see a very good distribution of the uh, selection where uh, the fold calculation is uh, going on the top. Thanks uh, to the audience for giving. I'll just uh, wait for a few seconds before we have the uh, good number of uh, polls uh, on the on the screen. And still we are getting a few votes on the screen very uh, thank you very much also on the screen you are seeing uh, the other courses we are hosting on the uh, app whilst we are uh, voting we'll go back and uh, show the business and uh, the next question is uh, which subject uh, would you recommend to go live on adapt me next this is the app which uh, we are going to uh, publish new modules from uh, Professor Rosa. So uh, your kind participation is uh, welcome. And I can already see uh, what's being flashed on the options. And thank you for this. This helps us to plan our modules in the upcoming sessions. I can see some votes coming up still, which is very good. and. We thank you for your polls. Uh, I will switch on to the uh, questions and answers. Uh, the next question is, what is zero positive and negative sequence in practice? Positive sequence, uh, negative sequence, and zero sequence, we have to, we are using for analysis, and that uh, we are going to talk in the uh, webinar session which uh, was just told about many polls have come up it is said on fault calculations but because you have answered negative sequence is due to unsymmetrical faults negative sequence currents are not present normally normally only positive sequence currents are present positive sequence means ir iy and ib magnitudes are same vectors ir iy ib are 120 degree apart and if you rotate the vectors iy will replace ir and ib will replace iy that is if you go clockwise the top one is ir then 120 degree apart clockwise will be iy further clockwise will be ib so ir iy uh, ib that means if you rotate the vectors anti-clockwise the iy will replace ir so that is ir iy ib positive sequence but that means that is known as sequence ryb but if there is ir then ib and iy it is negative sequence they are yet equal in magnitude uh, 120 degree apart but sequence has changed this negative sequence currents are helpful because they will produce the rotating magnetic field in a reverse direction whereas the physical rotor of any rotating machine Maybe synchronous generator, our alternator, maybe synchronous motor in industries, right? Maybe induction motor in the industry or induction generator, whatever. Any kind of rotating machine, the rotor is only rotating in one direction. The rotating magnetic field due to NPS current rotates in another direction. Therefore, it produces double frequency currents, induces double frequency currents in the rotor iron and therefore iron will be very badly heated in the worst case it become it can become red hot so negative sequence currents are very harmful and special protection should be given against nps currents to all dynamic machines zero sequence will be there only in case of earth faults l to g or double line to ground fault and zero sequence current is third harmonic current and third harmonic current will produce large iron losses because iron losses are proportional to particularly eddy current losses are proportional to frequency square therefore 
large iron losses will be produced. So these are the significances or consequences of positive, negative and zero. Negative and zero will be there only when the faults occur. Yes, friends. Any other uh, question? There is interesting. There are a few questions more. We'll take a couple of. Uh, this is a good question. Is it safe to trip generator circuit breaker on over frequency protection? Over frequency <clears throat> and under frequency is a very typical issue. Uh, this is normally done over frequency means generator speed will increase only if the load is thrown. Right? When the load is thrown, the generator speed will increase. But the generator speed can be well reduced by the, uh, the speed governors. Right? There are speed governors in the on the thermal power plant. In, and normally over speeding is not a big problem for thermal power plant. Because speed governors will work fast and to stop the steam is not that difficult. Water cannot be stopped as, as that easily as you can stop the steam or rather control the steam entry. Therefore, in hydro turbines, the over speeding or over frequency protection is there. Under frequency is an issue to be taken care of by proper load shedding. So now DF by DT and DV by DT relays are available or rather applications of df by dt and dv by dt available in all numerical relays and that can do proper load shedding to avoid the under frequency so these are the problems to be separately addressed yes friends uh before we go on to the next question for the audience uh, there are some uh, discount codes displayed on your screen uh use it uh, whenever you wish so uh, to get discounts, these are valid only up to 24th of September. Uh, the uh, moving on to the next question what is constant K in I square T? I2 square T equal to K, that is, I2 means negative sequence current. All generators usually are capable to withstand 5% of negative sequence current continuously. That is 24 hours and 365 days. Nothing happens. But if the negative sequence current is more than 5%, then the generator will be damaged. As I told you, the because of negative sequence current, the generator rotor iron is badly going to be damaged. Therefore, Damage is only heat because it is due to I2 square RT. So heat produced is a function of time. So there is a very inverse curve I2 square T equal to constant that is supplied by uh, generator manufacturer. So I2 square T equal to K. Value of K is supplied by the generator manufacturer. You have to draw that characteristic and your relay characteristic should lie below that curve. That means before the generator is damaged, your relay should trip. That is I2 square T equal to what is the value of K and what value of K you desire that you will have to specify in the specifications. Yes, friends. Uh, there are two questions uh, related to each other. In combined cycle power plant, are the temperature on steam generator side, HRSJ, are controlled from the primary gas turbine side? That's one. And uh, the second, similarly on nuclear power plants, the steam temperature is controlled by the coolant temperature of the reactor. Uh, yes, if, if the load, any, any temperature control is required with reference to load. If there is reduction of load, say in thermal power plant, when the load reduces, you are throttling the steam control valve. But in, in your uh, combined cycle pl power plant, uh, you will have to control it. The entry in HRSG, entry of gases in HRSG, you have to restrict. When you restrict, the, uh, the, the coolant entry in HRSG is also changed. So it is, it is a closed loop control cycle. It is, it is, it is a question of uh, control, that is linear control system or whatever, which we, would, we have all studied in, in BTEC classes for fifth semester or something. It's closed loop control. It's a question of controlling. Control action is there. And most of the controls are automatic. That means when load reduces, the coolant control, the entry of the 
what uh, entry of the uh, gases hot gases entry of the cool cool water that is required to cool the gases all entries will be automatically controlled to match with the load requirement yes friends I've always wondered and uh, uh, someone has just increased that uh, curiosity was is it possible turbine and generate turbine speed and generator speed is different is it possible uh, I have not heard about as of date uh, that different speed of uh, turbine and generator. You have to have a gearing mechanism that is done in boiler feed pumps. Boiler feed pump motor is 1500 RPM, 1440 RPM or so, and BFP is running at 3600 RPM, and that is change is done by uh, the gears. Uh, that is uh, gearing mechanism is there and there is a hydro gear also right which uh, which changes the uh, conveying of the speed from one to another so special types of gearing mechanisms are there in bfp but in main turbine our main turbine that runs a generator between main turbine and generator i have not heard of any any gearing mechanism so generator speed and turbine speed according to me is same for whatever kind of hydro um, uh, generator or uh, steam turbo alternator whatever you call yes friends uh i don't know if i can uh, read it correctly but uh, there's a question says you told if quantities of coal become low water content will become high and it can damage the turbine uh, what we use is to know the proper quantity of coal to be maintained. Quantity of coal, I, I don't know when did I tell. I, I was talking about the uh, uh, drum level. Drum level I was talking about. If proper quantity of coal is not received, then you have to you have to reduce the load on the unit nothing you can do nothing and finally you have to close the unit also because coal is a fuel that you require but i think the question is somewhere misunderstood drum level i was talking if the drum level increases then the upper part of the steam will become little wet and that wet steam will go to turbine and turbine will be damaged not necessarily hp or ip turbine because steam will get condensed in last stages of the lp turbine low pressure turbine so low pressure turbine will be damaged if the drum level increases so drum level is a very important criteria in control room the drum level is shown to the engineers and if engineer will see that the drum level is increasing he has to he has to immediately take actions right alarm will also be heard if drum level goes high and he has to take actions so i was telling that what actions are to be taken etc is a big subject by itself uh, how to operate the whole thermal power plant what are the emergencies how you will handle things how you will handle the uh, draft how you will handle the water steam cycle how controls are there instrumentation and control as instrumentation is a different side of the power plant itself so these are big issues that would take a long time and someday we will come out with the modules on power plant operation also a complete thermal power plant operation complete detailing of power plant operation so that one can uh, operate the power plant on the next day of learning apne seekh liya you have learned and you can go to the power plant room control room and you can operate you will be able to handle everything all emergencies so someday we will come out of uh, with those modules also yes friends before we go on to the final uh, few questions uh, i'd like to audience to uh, just rate us on the today's webinar uh, the content the mechanism and uh, of course we apologize for uh, the initial hitch uh, due to computer issues uh, and, uh, we will definitely uh, try to improve on the uh, upcoming webinars I can see some good number of stars uh, and uh, of course for the uh, lower stars we will try to improve and we will uh, connect you individually to find out what went wrong in your uh, reviews because 
your feedback is definitely important to the entire team thank you very much uh, for the answer and the last thing uh, just yes and no if uh, we want to check if the email updates are welcome from the upcoming webinar and the modules and uh, uh, everything and we'll keep in mind if there is an answer no we will keep in mind and we'll make sure uh, we don't disturb the uh, participants with frequent emails thank you very much for the votes uh, i'll take out uh, two more questions so uh, uh, sir, tell about brushless excitation system. Uh, if we can quickly answer this, and there's one more question uh, we can uh, do. So oh, it is a long answer. Brushless excitation system is, is because I, I will have to show the figures of brushless excitation system, which I do have. But right now, I have not prepared any slide for that. Brushless excitation system means basically there is no slip ring. The, uh, the current from DC current transport because DC current is required by the rotor, rotor winding, and rotor is rotating. So any current that you transfer to rotor will have to be transferred through slip ring and brushes and brushes will are going to because that's a weak link. They are going to create a large problem. So in brushless excitation system, the rectifiers are on rotating part. Rectifiers themselves are on the rotating part and the a C part that is given to the rotating part that is also through rotating machine. That is the AC generator, small AC generator is rotated on the same shaft as the main generator. And that will feed uh, AC to the uh, uh, rectifiers. And those rectifiers are also mounted on rotating part. And they will be feeding the rotor. Something like this is there in the brushless excitation system. But that excitation system is a subject by itself yes yes friends after uh, last question continuation of over frequency protection in your view what should be trip generator circuit breaker or turbine in case of over frequency protection over frequency protection uh, you have to you have to trip turbine only tripping generator breaker will not help because over frequency protection means your rotating parts are being damaged so you have to trip the turbine and uh, you have to uh, reduce the speed of the machine which is already increasing so stripping the generator breaker in case of over frequency protection is not going to help no doubt that has to be tripped in any case but main point is uh, to work on the turbine that is running the generator which is running at a higher speed that can happen if the if the speed governing system has become out of order there is some uh, fault with the speed governing system usually speed governing system is working very efficiently but by chance if there is some problem then that can happen so in that case you have to trip turbine only yes friends um, i think uh, we do not have any uh... No questions and we are also running out of time. Uh, team Adap, we would like to thank each and every participation uh, participants for uh, taking a lot of uh, valuable time out of the Saturday morning. And uh, we look forward to more uh, such webinars from uh, Professor Rosa and we'll keep you intimated. We'll definitely keep in mind uh, whoever answered uh, no to the uh, email uh, updates. And uh, should you have any queries or any updates needed, uh, please follow us on the social media pages, especially on YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, Redmi, where all these webinars are being hosted and can be viewed at a later date. Uh, any uh, other feedback, we would like to uh, get connected to the participants uh, via social media channels, and uh, uh, we will try our best to improve on every webinar session. We thank you, everyone, for your uh, time today. Thank you.